everyone, and welcome to the RV Inspection and Care podcast and video. I'm Dwayne. I'm a certified RV inspector. And today we're going to talk about what it costs to own and to maintain an RV. Now, many RVers are RVing because they're trying to save on vacation costs. And so it's a budget thing. And they have a budget for pretty much everything except for maintenance and repairs. They have figured out the monthly payments, the insurance, the fuel costs, the camping costs, but maintenance and repairs, well, that's kind of nebulous and more difficult to nail down. But RV maintenance and repairs can be a very significant annual cost. Now, I can't give you exact figures on what it's going to cost you for various reasons. It will depend on the quality of the RV you have, on the amenities, the number of amenities and luxuries in it. It'll depend to a large degree on how you care for your RV. That's a big one. And there's several other factors as well. So what we can conclude is it really is hard to give an exact figure for any particular situation. But Wholesale Warranties has created an infographic that I saw that I feel does help folks get a feel for component costs for repairs on an RV. And why am I turning to Wholesale Warranties? Well, it's because RV repairs is what their business is really all about and providing service contracts for that. So let's take a look at what they say about RV repair costs. And first of all, let's look at this graphic they made on motorhomes. Now, taking a look at that, let's go up to the upper left-hand side of the graphic, and we'll start with heating. And their, their, their projection is that expenses could be $300 to $1,500 in repairs there. On slide-outs, $500 to $1,700. Honestly, I feel like that could even be a little low. Refrigerators, $600 to $3,500. Roof ACs, about the same amount. Then we get to the transmission in a motorhome, and that can be significant. Repairs there can run $1,900 to $12,000. The dash air could be $700 to $3,800. And now the engine. Once again, this is a biggie especially if it's a big diesel engine. Repairs there could go anywhere from $1,400 to $30,000. Braking components could be $500 to $2,500 to repair. Fuel system, $600 to $3,400. The leveling system, $500 to $2,000. The waste system, $400 to $3,400. And finally, if you have an installed generator that could run anywhere from $400 to $4,000 for repairs. Now, one thing I want to mention here is that these are very good overall layouts for components of an RV. But keep in mind, this is not all of your expenses. There could be also expenses for water leak repairs, for replacing your tires regularly for replacing awnings and so on. But I do feel that the graphic does give you a pretty good breakdown on the components. Also notice that there's a wide range of costs here. And again, that's because you can't really nail down something specific for each situation. However, I do feel that this graphic is useful because it helps you compare repair costs from one component of the RV to another. And maybe what you might want to do is use the lower figures they're giving here or a mid-range of figures to produce your budget. Now, let's move along to towables. And towables do not include the engine and the drivetrain that motorhomes have. And so when you look at this graphic, you're going to notice that the costs associated with the house or the RV part of the towable is very similar to what you have with the cost of the house of a motorhome. That's because they are similar in makeup. However, what you're seeing here in this graphic is you don't see the engine and drivetrain costs here. 
Now, why is that? That's simply because those costs are transferred to the tow vehicle for that towable RV, either a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. Now, some feel that towables then are less expensive to maintain and repair than motorhomes. However, you see, that doesn't take into account the cost of the tow vehicle that's involved too. When you add the tow vehicle in with your tow towable RV, and you compare the repair and maintenance costs there with a motorhome, honestly, they're pretty similar. But there are a couple of factors, however, that do impact maintenance and repair costs, factors under your control. And let's talk about that. One of them is the size of RV that you choose. The bigger the RV, generally, the more expense there's going to be to care for it. The number of luxury items and amenities, the more there are, the more there is to go wrong and therefore repair. The more slides you have, the bigger slides you have, those can definitely contribute to more expense. If you have an RV that has a lot of advanced RV technology in it, well, if things, a lot of things are controlled digitally in your RV, you may not be able to repair it when it goes wrong, and it may cost you to have someone who's experienced and knowledgeable to make that repair. So let me give you this maxim. Generally speaking, usually the simpler and the smaller the RV, the less costs you're going to have to repair and maintain it. Now, the most expensive RVs, generally speaking, are often Class A diesel pushers like I own. In fact, I made a video on that subject a little while back, and I showed how that I had made a projected budget for my costs, but my budget was seriously low, and it would be good for you to view the RV and see how that turned out. The least expensive RVs are small travel trailers, with just the camping basics. All right, now let's talk a little bit about how to keep repair and maintenance costs down as much as possible. And the number one thing you can do is learn how to repair most things on an RV yourself. Here's the good news. Roughly 80% of things that go wrong on RVs can be fixed by the average owner with a little bit of knowledge that you often find on YouTube. And that'll save you that big, expensive hourly rate for labor that an RV facility is going to charge you on those repairs. Next up is do your maintenance tasks on schedule. Don't let them slide. That will help prevent major problems that will be costly. Number three, if you want to manage your RV repair costs, then you might want to consider getting a service contract or what some people refer to as extended warranties. And that will help you cover the major repair costs that could come up. Personally, I think it makes most sense for those who own more complex and bigger RVs. But I do recommend that you consider it. I also recommend wholesale warranties as a good place to start on that. They have a great reputation among the full-time RVing community. Next up is choose a highly rated repair facility that's near you and then make sure you can trust them first of all and then establish a relationship. Try to do your business with them, your repairs with them, and even maintenance if you choose exclusively. That way they get to know you you get to know them, it becomes a relationship, and over the course of time, that kind of thing can lead to their saving you money on RV repairs and maintenance. Well, I hope these tips that I've given you will be helpful, that they'll be beneficial and help you keep your repair and maintenance costs on your RV as low as possible. And that's it for now. Have safe and happy travels, my friends, until next time.